Hello, hello. Can you guys hear us? One more try. No volume. Do it from the computer. Hello, hello. Yes. Hey, Tammy, thank you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Can you guys hear us? Right. One more try. Cool. Okay, We're um, here. it is Dr. James. Just let's try this. Be on stage and make that happen. So today is a, an amazing topic. We already did this uh, about 15 minutes, so we're going to do it again. I guess that was just a practice round here. So today, today's topic is about ketones and dieting and how dieting and ketones play a role in someone's depression, someone's anxiety, someone's obesity, and encompassing all health here. So go ahead and cover what you want to cover in the beginning. Yeah, you know, we, we've been talking about how um, most people live um, a life that is just full of, of sugar and carbohydrates and it's full of, of um, conventional meats and just a bunch of, of processed foods and, and not really understanding how bad that is for your body and for your cells. You know, a lot of times people just say, um, I'm going to eat whatever I want to eat and it's not going to affect me. Well, the reality is, is that yes, it is going to affect you. It may be not today. You might not feel sick today because what actually happens is that your body becomes immune to these things and yeah. it starts getting used to it over time. It build, builds tolerance to it. Uh, so we're just going to really just help you understand how to honor your symptoms, really, um, and, and see how your body reacts to certain foods. And then also just give you some insight to what life looks like once you start removing processed food and, and toxic foods and, and just the sugars and the, all the carbohydrates and stuff like that. I've been on a ketone diet for 30 days straight, and the mental clarity that I have is abundant. And I've never felt this clear in my life. It's been – it was um, – you know, told to me or described to me that my brain, right, the outer layer of it, that's where most people live. But like, I can literally feel the inner workings of my brain because of this thing called the ketone diet. We'll go through that in detail. But I want to go through the psychology of why people eat and why people diet. And I really yeah. think that that word diet, right, um, needs to die. They need to take the T off. We need to kill diets because diets don't work. You know, there's many people out there people that I love and care about and, and you know they tried the fad diets and they just bounce back to where they were or actually they gain more weight. So we have to stop thinking of food as what we're eating and why we're eating it has to be more of a question, right? What are we doing? Why are we consuming these things? You know, and and what is the purpose of that? And for me it's to fuel my body yeah. now. And as soon as I started to think about that differently, that's when my brain started to change from okay why am I eating this thing called a protein, which is one of the three macronutrients? Why am I eating this thing called a fat? Why am I eating this thing called a car carbohydrates? And, and again, we're going to break down protein, fat, and carbohydrate for you and why it's important to understand that the middle one, fat, should be 70 to 75 percent of what you're consuming every single day. And that goes completely against what most people have learned their entire life. So it's going to be controversial here and there's things in the news about coconut oil and you know this is bad, that's bad, this 
crazy movie that I don't suggest anyone watch called What the Health. You know, it, it's backed by um, people that are making these horrible vegetable oils. And, you know, they, they say that fat does cause heart disease and sugar doesn't cause diabetes. And it's just made out of this, what they call whole cloth. It's not great science. And we'll go through that in detail here today. But again, we have to start changing our psychology. Stop eating for pleasure and start eating for fuel. And the, you know, the reality is, is that there's many of you out there that struggle with this concept of, of eating and food, and it's just become something that has, has overtaken you so much. And there comes a time in your life where, where you just, you overcome food and you start to obtain control. And that takes time, right? You're going to, you're going to allow your, it's, it, there's going to be failures. Right. And, and that's, you know, if we have counted the times that we've failed in our in our journey to health and to nutrition and to exercise and all this stuff that we've been doing, if we could count the number of failures, um, we would have a book full of them. But the thing is, is that we, we don't see failures as, as the end. We see failures as a way to restructure, get it back together, and how can I approach this a different way so that I can succeed Where does it come from? And why is it not efficient to consume a lot of animal protein? Yeah, protein, you know, comes from animals. Is That's where people mostly, you know, so I'm a vegetarian. So I, I typically don't eat any, you know, I don't want to say I'm a veg, I don't like to give myself a title. I don't eat meat, right? Uh, because I do have some animal products. So I don't really have, I'm in my own little category. But the thing is, is that uh, only, people only think that you get protein from meat sources, from chicken, from beef, from, from whatever it is. And you can get this kind of stuff from, uh, from vegetables, you can get this from kale, you can get this from hemp seeds, from flax seeds, from whatever it is. And the reason we have that is to build healthy muscles, right? Yeah. And But the problem is, is that you can go, too much of a good thing is not always a good thing. So you can go swaying it to one side. And if you have an over consumption of protein, your body actually starts turning that into sugar. And one thing we have to realize just knowing that fact is that uh, your body does not need glucose or sugar to survive because it can and it does have the ability to actually take protein and change it into sugar and that's how it's going to be able to run with that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, okay, you know, what do you mean by animal protein? So for me, I don't think animal protein is that bad if it's not done in excess. So for me, you know, I'll eat a steak. I did this weekend, but I won't do another steak until next month, you know, so I do about one big, nice steak a month. But you gotta be, re you gotta realize, you know, if you go to these restaurants that have these aged steak, you know, that steak is coming from processed animals, really. They're just created in a, in a laboratory called the farm, and they're injected with antibiotics and um, hormones and steroids, and. They're, they're fed pesticides in the corn that they eat, and it just destroys a good thing. It, it creates this inflammatory piece of junk that's on your plate at a nice steak restaurant, and you're paying a sometimes lot. $60 for it, you know, and that creates inflammation in your body. So for me, I, I want to go to the grass-fed farms. Yes, you're going to pay a little bit more for that stuff, but it's not something that I consume every day. Chicken and uh, fish you know, certain kinds of fish because there could be problems with mercury and different heavy metals in fish as well. You know, shellfish you shouldn't consume regularly because they have shell on their bottom feeders and they eat pretty much just poop on the bottom of the ocean floor. So again, it, it's the type and the source of protein that, you know, you need to really look at and see what you're consuming. So um, we have to realize that it's not just a protein, fat, and carbohydrate, you've got to see where the source of that protein, fat, and carbohydrate is as well. So for me, I try to limit the amount of protein intake to 20% of my intake per day because anything excess in that is going to be converted into what we're going to talk next, and that's a carbohydrate or sugar. So can we stick there on protein for yep. just a second because I know that you obviously do some weightlifting and so a question I get from patients is am I going to be able to build muscle am I going to be able to um, to run just on that you know this 20% protein 75% fat 5% carbohydrates right can my body run can I build muscle can I lose weight then too yeah so for me this morning like I, I think I got two people saying what are you doing in the gym a patient of mine and you know Brian if you're out there good to see you but um, you know 
I've actually put on muscle mass, not even trying. And, you know, if I gained five pounds on the ketogenic diet, reducing my protein and increasing my fat. And we'll talk about the mechanism of that and the chemistry of that and why that's happening. But, um, you know, I'm not really trying to, to build muscle. I'm doing the same routine that I did for the past year and a half, and I'm building muscle and cutting the fat out because of the, the just switch in the types of protein that I'm eating and the, the, the amount of carbohydrates I need, I'm eating and the amount of fat I'm eating. I'm overabundantly eating fat compared to a year ago. So let's move on to carbohydrates and, and why eating too much protein turns into carbohydrate. That's a problem, right? So, so again, eating too much protein, more than 20%, it converts in your body to a sugar. for a fuel, right? So talk about carbohydrates and why do you think we are in overabundance of con consumption of carbohydrates in this country? First thing, it's easy. Second thing, it's addicting, right? There's these, the grains are addicted. There's, there's a part of the grain that you're actually addicted to. Um, and then also the sugar that it turns into, your body craves that stuff, right? Um, but, you know, I've been thinking about not necessarily evolution, but we have evolved over time, right? Uh, so, you know, hunters and gatherers and where things were back then, you know, our sugar and carbohydrates was like a luxury. Right. Even, even meals, really. You, we can get into intermittent fasting and things like that, too, because meals and all that stuff is, is, is a luxury. And we're just... Um, Sorry, just making sure there's volume. No worries. There is. Um, and... Carbohydrates, heaven. Yeah. Bad carbohydrates. Um, but for me, yeah, there's there's all kinds of. But again, she said she hit the nail on the head there. It's it's cheap. Um, and it's more efficient because you can I would consume, you, you know, or something anybody should consume, right? Just basically think about it. it add water and it fluffs up and, and becomes soft like pasta and you consume that stuff. It's not really efficient for your body. And we were never meant to consume. If you think about wheat and these carbohydrates that most people are eating, and, and corn. Corn is, is a wheat. The, the, the seed of the corn is, is a big... Our body doesn't know how to respond to it. And not because it's all stored in your fat cells, because we don't use as many carbohydrates as Fuel sources. If you know, Dr. Mc. Earth, um, because of the high fructose. Consuming, I try to keep them at bay a hundred percent. And that's not coming from bread, and it's not coming from, no, no. from that kind of stuff. That's from, it's from like the cauliflower. What I consume every day a little bit. Um, and there's even protein and carbohydrates. Go ahead and like and share this. We had a rough start on the, on the videos, but can you just like this and share it? And make sure you're getting the word out. I see that there's a lot of viewers out there, so we. So. Yeah, we do this stuff just because we want to get this message out there. We can't do that with. Again, so we can get this message out <laughs> there. So the main topic we want to talk about today, and it's a very controversial topic, is fat. And I want to ask you, why do you think fat is, has such a bad rap? Because there's a misconception that fat makes you fat. What, where did that come from? Um, the, I don't know. 
Some guy said yes, that it, some guy that it's his name was Ansel Keys. He, he know he know he liked this video. And um, <laughs> you know if you, if you look at the video, it's called Big Fat Lies. And basically, what he did is right after the war, World War II, he went in and he studies uh, studied um, why these cultures that ate high cholesterol had a high amount of heart disease. So he 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 pinned it on saturated fats, and he went into Naples, Italy, and he observed what was going on there. And he noticed that the people that were um, the uh, in the Rotary Club that had more access because they had more money. To, to meet every single day, they ate meat every single day, he assumed that that caused more heart disease because the people that didn't have any money had to consume the lower price items like pizza and pastas and different things that would fill you up but it wouldn't really make you nutrient dense. But he left out the fact that, you know, pizza contains what? Cheese. Sugar. Cheese. cheese. So that contains a lot of cholesterol. You know, the, the animal proteins contains a lot of cholesterol as well. And I want to teach you guys that not one study out there has proved that high cholesterol in your bloodstream causes more heart disease. It's never been proven, not even once. They're even saying that people that take high cholesterol medications, they die with lower cholesterol, but it's still causing the same result as if you were not yeah. taking the, the high cholesterol medications. So. And it, it's a complete big lie that your big pharma is banking on and they're making all these, you know, I've said this for years, but there's thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people that die every single year on cholesterol lowering medications like Lipitor. You know, and if we think about it, when we talk about this fuel and the source, your brain and your spinal cord and every cell, tissue and organ that's in your body has what we call a lipid bilayer. And your minerals, all those things that we want and need for a cell to function correctly, your lipid bilayer has to be um, perfect, you know, and consuming bad fats, and that's a huge topic that we want to cover as well. It, it, it's the type of fat that you're consuming. So I'm not saying go out there and suck down a big thing of vegetable oil. It's not probably a good idea or canola oil, you know, but for me, it, it's the type of fats that we're consuming. And, and when we get down to the, the research and really what the purpose of eating fuel is, is to create energy. And the books that I'm reading, you know, we learn about this in, in, in biology class back in, you know, eighth grade, but and then all the way through chiropractic college and all this stuff that we, we learn, we learn about the powerhouse of the cell. Mm -hmm. And what is that called? The mitochondria. The mitochondria. The mighty mitochondria. And they make your ATP, which is your energy production. If you want to get scientific, it's adenosine triphosphate. And there's a hundred, actually, let me get this right, 10 million billion mitochondria in everybody's body okay so if you think about that the tip of this pen would hold one million one billion mitochondria so it's just so crazy for me to understand i have to keep looking at this but one billion mitochondria on the tip of a pen in every cell that you have in your body and if you think about it for me the average um, person has 10 pounds of mitochondria in their body so for me, I want those mitochondria working for my benefit. If they're creating my energy, I want them efficiently fueled and working correctly and making sure that, you know, think about it. If only 50% of those mitochondria, 10 pounds, there's only now five pounds working correctly, mm -hmm. you're going to be lethargic. You're going to be depressed. You're going to have anxiety. You're going to have all of these other things. So again, when we talk about fuel, the main source, the best source that those mitochondria can work from is fat. Yeah, and you know, I do these specific blood and urine tests. This is really what I get to see. I get to see, you know, things like CoQ10 being out of balance and vitamin, vitamin B being that out of balance. When it comes to fat, you know, one of the big things with, um, you know, the health culture is you got to eat the low fat stuff, low car or low fat, low carbs, right? And so the So what, why do you think that happened? 
Because it became culture and, and somebody made it popular and everybody started following it's it. This study, this is Ansel Keys. So go ahead and look at the Big Fat Lies video on YouTube and it'll, it's only two and a half minutes, but it just breaks this down in depth. And we'll put it in the show notes at the bottom of this so you guys can get it. But it's called Big Fat Lies and it's a cartoon in the beginning and they interview some doctors. But again, after that 1951 study came out, fat started to be taken out of our foods. So they noticed that the fat that was in the foods tasted good. Fat tastes good, right? Fat is flavor. Fat is flavor. If you like to say it, fat and salt. If, you know, if you're a good chef, you know how to work your fat and you work your salt and you work your citruses. And that creates an amazing chef. Um, you know, so if they take the fat off the, uh, off the market and out of your foods, what do they have to add to it? It's sugar. sugar. And not just sugar. It's high fructose corn syrup. It's not even sugar made, you know, from a from a cane. It's, it's sugar that's made in the cornfield down the road, and it's inefficient fuel. And they say that if you get one drop of um, uh, high fructose corn syrup in your bloodstream, the raw stuff, it kills you. It's fatal. And we have it. Look at your packaged foods. Go right now. Look in your cupboard. Bring your phone to your pantry. <laughs> turn your crackers around and look and see if it doesn't say high fructose corn syrup and a million different kinds of sugar that's been added. You know, we did a talk and this lady was talking about one of our patients, not a lady, but one of our patients, mm -hmm. was talking about how this person was on the ketone diet and they were eating Skippy, um, the low fat Skippy. So she turned it around, she compared the regular Skippy to the, the um, low fat Skippy and it had double the amount of sugar in it because it tasted so bad when they took the fat out because, you know, they thought fat was bad for you. You said something there is modified ketogenic diet and we always talk about trying to stay as pure as possible because the more you modify something, the more modified your results are going to be. And you know, it's for you ladies out there that are worried about eating fat and, and it affecting your weight, um, you know, for me, I've been doing this for about a month now, you, you kind of, he brought me over to the dark side. And uh, so being consistent with that, I've lost seven pounds in the last month and it's, I'm, I'm, I've slimmed down, I've gotten more cut and so, and I, my, my workouts are better, my energy is better, uh, my thinking's better, our communication is better. But when we're off, man, we're off. But, but and you know that, and this, you just have to honor those symptoms to knowing that, but you're not going to, you're, sometimes people are worried about either gaining too much weight or losing too much weight. Your body is going to know exactly what to do when you put the exact right foods in it, whether it's fats, whether it's proteins, whether it's carbohydrates. But it's gotta be a clean, good source. You have an intelligent wisdom inside of you that's going to do what it needs to do to create what it needs to create. And there's power in also fasting. So for me, I do intermittent fasting with this diet. So I haven't consumed anything um, solid today yet. So basically in my tea in the morning when I wake up at 5, 5 a.m., I, I um, heat up with some water, put a tea in there, put some good ghee, and some some coconut oil in there as well and some turmeric and that's my breakfast and then you know I, I did a call this morning after that I took a spoonful of um, uh, coconut oil and then right before this I did that as well because my brain doing these things just yep. runs through energy but again if I was consuming so many carbohydrates like I'd been used to for the last 30 years of my life then I go through cravings and I don't I don't even have a craving yet I'm, I'm not hungry you know, I know I need to eat soon, but I'm not like, oh my God, my whole body's in. And that has helped our relationship as well because I don't go through those crazy mood swings. And I know a lot of you out there can um, relate to that. You know, we, like we talked about, we had those technical difficulties at the event on Saturday and I just stayed calm. I think she was more crazy than I was. Because I'm used to the yeah, old Because she James, used to me like... going flipping off the wall, but I stayed calm and my cortisol level stayed down and we ripped that talk and I, I think we got a lot of great, great messages out there to people and helped change, transform people's lives. But again, it, you know, it, it's the cortisol production and also we talk about if you're consuming too many heart carbohydrates, it's the insulin production. And the insulin production is really what we want to keep at bay because if you're producing too much insulin, that means you're producing too much inflammation. And that's really, they've done research with rats and the more inflammation, the more insulin that they produced, they injected them right into their femoral artery, the more inflammation they had because the body responds by inflaming. And that's when the LDL, that bad cholesterol, right? So there's two different types of LDLs. There's the fluffy kind and the little kind. The little kind oxidizes, oxidizes faster. So that's when it becomes plaque. 
but it's because it's not because of the fat that you're eating. It's because of the sugar that's causing the inflammation that gets stuck to those things. That you know. So again, it, it's all encompassing. You can't just consume more fat plus eat more all of the sugar that you're eating today. You've got to make sure that you're doing it correctly. So again, when we talk about the different portions, proteins twenty percent, fat seventy five percent, carbohydrates five percent. I'm just thinking about how like if you're angry it's because your cells are angry and you're completely you're just expressing what your cells are expressing. that's a great transition and if your cells are angry I wouldn't say angry tired I would say tired if your cells are tired then that's going to be manifested in different ways in different people so for me when I'm tired I get just like a pleasure to angry. deal with and I'm gonna be completely transparent <laughs> like do not come around me when I'm tired and when I have abundant energy my communication's better, you know, with my family. My communication's better with my patients. My communication's better. And again, I, I was good before, but now I can last longer. Like this weekend, my house flooded up at the lake, and I had mud all over the basement, and it took me two days to get it out. I didn't get much energy, you know, replenishment this weekend. I didn't get much rest, you know. And, and Monday, I usually would have been like, I'm not coming to work. I can't even move. But I made it through it. It wasn't pleasant. I still had, you know, some issues to go through. But again, this diet helped me go through all of that. And if you think about people that are depressed, you look at that mitochondria function inside of their body, and I guarantee you that mitochondria function is not working to their full potential. Anxiety, depression, all of this stuff, it encompasses energy. Yeah. Go ahead. No, nope, I, was, I was done. Cool. So I just wanted to go through some stats. You know, we know that 10% of women 18 or older are on antidepressants and 4% of men. And I read something, of, like, mind-blowing this morning about how pharmaceuticals actually have um, been depleting our cells, okay? And so it it's, uh, depletes your cells of nu nutrients that you absolutely need. And the three main ones that it depletes are CoQ10, magnesium, and vitamin Bs. And when you think about what the mitochondria needs, it's those exact three things. So, uh, you know, brain, why do they need that? Let's go back to that. The Krebs cycle. Yep, the it, Krebs cycle is huge, and that's what like so like CoQ10 is the fuel going in to make everything start running, and then it goes through the whole scientific. Yeah. So if you're missing just a little piece of that, it's like taking a cog out of a wheel, and your whole watch stops to stops because you know you're missing a key ingredient to make everything function correctly and then multiply that by 10 million billion <laughs> mitochondria and again it's just like the dimmer switches on and you're, you can't function correctly it's just interesting to me that the medications that they're giving people for anti-depression and um, like anti-anxiety stuff is depleting the exact same things that you would need to have healthy happy cells and yet uh, there's been no I mean, I mean, I'm sure there is some sort of a correlation between that with them, but they're ignoring it. And, and just ignoring that stuff just doesn't make sense to me. You're putting a blinder on it and it's right in front of your face. So we just want to shed some light on this stuff yeah. today because, you know, I know that when I've gotten into ketosis, my sleeping has gotten better. My um, dreams are more, you know, I'm like, crazy. I have a, we have a patient um, and he just started doing the ketogenic diet and he just went through this metabolic testing with me and switching all of the supplements, uh, switching into the ketogenic diet, and he is like, I don't know where all this energy came from. It feels like somebody just turned on a light switch for me. That's He's what like, he said, like, I was using the outer part of my brain recently, and now it's like I'm going in the inner depths of it, and I think that's a great illustration yeah. of that. And he even says, he's like, I have so much energy and it's like nine o'clock at night and yeah. I'm like, how am I going to fall asleep? He's like, and then my body shuts down and I fall asleep and I'm up at 5 a.m. and I'm just like ready to go. Yeah. And so that's really like just how we feel and we're just excited and happy. And like yesterday, like somebody was like, you just look so beautiful. I had like four people tell me that yesterday. I'm like, I have the same outfit I wear on every Monday. It's the same, you know. You so, start radiating yeah. at a different vibration and I think people can pick up on that, you know, and, and you start thinking different thoughts. And that's huge because, you know, if, if you're in a rut and you, you're depressed, you know, that, that rut you can't get out of until you make that decision. You know, but think about, and she said a good thing, you know, a couple minutes back. It was about um, how these medications just add to the problem. Well, think about it. If, if every cell, tissue, and organ in your body and every hormone is needy, it needs cholesterol, basically, or, or fats, and your doctor says you have high cholesterol, 
It's probably because your body's in repair. And then you take this Lipitor that reduces the repair mechanism in your body. Think about the nastiness that's going to happen over time with that. You know, there's a thing called regeneration in your body. So again, if, if, a, if a million cells die in your body and you want to be healthy and you want those tissues and organs to be healthy, you've got to make sure the million cells are reborn. And not just reborn, but reborn with strength, good, healthy cell tissue. The only way that happens is with cholesterol, is with fats. And again, fat does not make you fat. It actually heals your entire body. It helps heal your entire body. You know, it's a key ingredient to the makeup of the cells, tissues, and organs. Like I said, every single cell, tissue, and organ. So just because a, a doctor takes a snapshot, a blood test, and says, hey, you have elevated cholesterol today, doesn't mean anything. You know, you got to make sure you look at the entire picture. And that's the problem with West, Western medicine is that they take snapshots and say, oh, you're sick now. You've got to take this drug. Let me monitor you in a couple of weeks and see what happens. They're never looking at the cause of the problem. They're never looking at the issue. They're always covering up the symptom. You know, just as we wrap this up here, we're about at our 30 minute mark here. Uh, you know, sometimes I hear people say, I don't have time to, to make food. I don't have time to do this. And you know, the first thing that I think of when I hear that is you do have time. We have the same 24 hours in the day. Uh, you, your value system is just completely turned around. Um, so if you value something, you make time for it. And that just comes with restructuring your, your war plan, restructuring your day, and figuring out what you value. You know, so, so if you ever tell me that you don't have time to exercise or eat right, you know, it's just a complete lie. It's an excuse. And it's time for us to become less, um, have less forgiveness for our excuses, right? Because we, sometimes we get a little bit too cozy inside of our excuses. And we let excuses run our lives. And, and more excuses are never going to change your circumstances. It takes action to really start changing those circumstances and get the job done. And it's just a, it's a commitment. It's a decision and it's a yes, I'm going to do it. Yeah, and if you don't have time, really what that's saying is you don't have energy. You know, because if you had the energy, you would find time to do what you needed to do, to get up a little bit earlier and exercise, you know, instead of staying, sleeping until 6.30, you know, get up at 5. Um, you know, and, and again, just doing these things consistently over time helps your body's metabolism and energy production. So you have the abundance that you need, the ATP that you need, the mitochondria that are working efficiently for you. And, and what do you think contains, what part of your body do you think contains almost 60% of mitochondria? Your brain. Your brain. That wasn't a trick question. <laughs> you know, because if your brain is shut down, your brain controls 100% of your body, and we always finish with that. And how does your brain communicate to every cell, right? So if the mitochondria are in your cells, and there are 1 billion mitochondria on the head of this pin, so about... 10 billion in each cell. How do those mitochondria know what to do? It uses your nervous system. Yeah, so your brain controls all of those mitochondria. And again, that brain sends life down the spinal cord, and that's why chiropractors, you know, we don't really add or subtract anything. All we do is remove interference. So no matter what you're eating, protein, fat, carbohydrates, this system called the nervous system is what needs to be functioning first, right? Function before food, function before fitness, function even before finances because if you can't function correctly none of that stuff matters right so again I want my brain running efficiently through the fat that I'm consuming right and the exercise that I have and the sleep that I get a lot encompasses this We're talking about fat today and I want to make sure that brain is communicating down the spinal cord outside out into your nerves into the organs to make them function correctly but not just function correctly regenerate correctly you know, it says, they say that every six years your body flips, meaning that every cell, tissue, and organ, including the cells in your skeletal system, will die and be reborn. It's called regeneration. And the process that does that, how does that happen? It's your brain. Your brain communicating to your cells, tissues, and organs to make them function correctly and regenerate correctly. And when we talk about efficiency at the end of our lives, again, I want you all running down the beach with your great-grandchildren, not worried about the next drug the doctor's gonna put you on. So how do we do that? We start to make the decisions today, start applying those decisions to our life, start creating habits, 
you know, that we teach in the Maximize Living Five Essentials, make sure that your mindset's right, make sure that your spine is right, make sure that the nervous system is, is communicating correctly, make sure through things like this that we're eating correctly and fueling our bodies correctly, make sure that we're exercised correctly so we can get the, the, the fat off of our body and the, the lean muscle onto our body and we're utilizing oxygen correctly and minimizing our toxins. And really that's the message and if you bottle that up, That's good. Perfect. So that was tea time, episode four. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. Remember that we love you guys. And again, we want you to like this and share this. We know that this information can save and change someone's life. So go ahead and get that message out to as many people as we can. See you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye. Peace out.